Hello, welcome to my video. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to download Earth Engine image and image collection is GeoTIFF and NumPy array. Okay, so um, in order to follow this tutorial, you need to install the GE Map Python package. If you have not done so, please follow my previous tutorials on how to install the package. You can either install using pip or you can install using conda. And also make sure that if you install this one before, you need to update to the latest one uh, because this one I'm introducing here today, uh, use the latest version uh, 0.06.2. So make sure you have the latest one, you need to update first. And once you update the package, then you can use the notebook example. So uh, under no examples, notebooks, and there should be one called export image. Okay. And I already downloaded one to my computer. Uh, so then we can um, get started. So first of all, you need to activate the Conda environment. So minus your Conda G and then use the type Jupyter notebook. And it's open a notebook on your computer. So let me maximize the window and then go to GE map, examples, notebooks, and export image. First, let me clear all the outputs so that we can start from uh, scratch. First of all, you need to import the packages and then we can create an interactive map Keep that in mind, you don't really need to create a map in order to export the data, but uh, because I want to show you what the data looks like before we uh, export the image. And so this is the base map. You see here right now, we only have one layer. So next we are going to add a lens set data layer. So this is an image. And then this is how we're going to visualize the data. And so the last line here is to add this one to the map. Okay, this is the opacity, so uh, let me change it to one and just execute. So now you have this uh, image. So this is for the entire group. And this right now will be already being added to the map. So next, uh, we can try to draw a rectangle or draw any reason of interest to download the data. So uh, all you need to do, for example, you can come here and um, so I can, you can use the drawing tool here to draw a rectangle or you can draw a polygon. Uh, either one is fine, so I'm just going to use here the rectangle. And for example, in this case, I just draw one rectangle. Okay, and this one after it's being drawn is converted to uh, Earth Engine object. So this is from here. But how do you access? You can turn this one on and off. But how do you access this one? Um, so let me comment out this one first. In the Earth Engine, uh, in this package, uh, the GE map, so I already programmed uh, that into the map, uh, into the library. So all you need to do is just to map dot draw last feature. So this is, it will retrieve the polygon or the rectangle that you just draw, for example, in here. And then we can just show it, for example, see what it looks like. Okay. So this one shows you right now, this one is a, 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 a feature that we just draw. You can draw multiple polygons. And then all you need to do is just map dot draw. And then if you hit uh, shift, uh, hit tap on your keyboard, you should be able to see these are uh, available. So draw last feature basically represent the last polygon. If you draw multiple polygons, then you, you, it will show you more. So for now, we're just going to use this one, but I certainly I can draw another one, for example. If I draw this one in here. Okay, so now we have two polygons, uh, a rectangle. You can draw a polygon, uh, it's up to you. So if I use this one, draw, and then the chip tap, uh, all uh, draw features. This one will show you uh, here because we draw two features. So it's a list. Right now we have two. Um, and so next, let's do, for example, we just want to extract the, the lens set data from the polygon that we just draw here, the last one. You can extract both. Um, either one is fine. So we're just going to copy this line here just to show you what it looks like. So the last feature and then because it's a feature we want to convert it to a geometry so that we can pass it into uh, uh, later to use that as an ROI to extract the data okay so 
first of all, this uh, with x u this one. So now this r i becomes an OS engine geometry, and we should be able to use it later. First of all, let's um, set some uh, file path. So I want to download the data to my output folder under the downloads. So you will be here. Uh, you can you can set directly set any file path you want. So you will be down under my user folder downloads. So everything is coming here, and this is the file name. We are going to land. Uh, and the, the uh, output file name will be called lenset.tif, okay? So just execute. So this is where we want to download data. It's only one line, so it's pretty simple and straightforward. You just call the package function called ee export image. And this is the image that is basically the lenset image from here. Uh, it's for the entire group. And we're going to download this one. The file name is it's going to be called lenset.tif under the data uh, downloads folder. And the scale, you can set whatever you want, but length set is uh, 30 meters. So uh, because for um, this uh, demo, I'm just going to download a coarser resolution, but you can set to 30, you can set to 100, up to you. Then you can set here the reason is the, the ROI. So we're just passing this geometry that we just draw here into this reason. The last parameter is file per band, basically, Lens data has um, uh, have seven bands. If you set to false, you will download all the bands and then put as one file. But you can also set to two. Then you will each band will as one single image. Okay. So first of all, let's just uh, take a look at this one. So you're going to download just one file automatically. Generate the URL and this is a link. Uh, of course, you can click the link to download the data as a zip file. But uh, this is done automatically. So now if you open the downloads folder, you should be able to see this one, okay? If you click the link, you don't have to click the link because um, behind the scene, I already downloaded it for you. So if you click the link, you will download it as a zip file. So in the program, like behind, I already download the file as a zip file and then unzip the file. So now you only have this one. You can delete this. So this is uh, the, the TIFF, right? You can also download this is, um, um, all the, the file is each individual band. So I'm gonna hit run in here. You will see here, um, it's download, it's done. And now if you open here, you have seven individual bands download as each individual image. Then you can open these images in uh, QGIS or ArcGIS, whatever you, uh, software you are using. Okay, so let's uh, how you download the data using um, this one single function, uh, passing the image you want, and then most importantly, ROI. I would suggest that if just a small ROI, if you want to download a huge data set, then you probably want to try uh, download the data to Google Drive. I might have some other videos in the future to show you how to download data to your Google Drive using just one line of code. Okay, so next, how do we download the data uh, from uh, image collection? Because this is one single image, but sometimes you might want to download time series images from an uh, image collection. So for example, um, I want to download the USDA net imagery. Okay, so it has uh, different time periods. If you if you feel after you filter the imagery using a location, then it's going to show you like a bunch of images. How do you download these images just all at once without having to um, go through one by one? Okay, so simple. Just execute this line. All you need to do is just to create a visual collection. Um, depending on how you what, what data you need. So in this case, I'm going to use the uh, net imagery. And then again, set the folder. Okay, you want to download the data, so I want to download the data to the downloads folder. And so let's get started. All you need to do, whatever visual collection you need, you can certainly pass more parameters. So all you need to do is just uh, shift tap, and you see from here there's some parameter very similar to the one we use above. So you can pass in the reason. If you don't pass in, you automatically download the entire footprint. Make sure that if you are downloading for the entire globe. Um, you don't have enough stories, then you need to set the ROI. You can also set the scale and the file per man, uh, basically if you want the individual or not. So in this case, I'm just use all the default settings. You're gonna download this uh, image collection because I already filter by a point. So it's only a small uh, tile and then a, a couple of tiles. Then you just set the output folder and that's it. So hit one. Then you can come back here to take a look uh, from here. So because this one total has uh, six images, so it's going to download one by one. You can take a look at in here, right? 2009, 2010, 2012, 2014, uh, 15, 17, okay? 
it's done. So everything is automatic. There's nothing you need to you to, um, to interact. So lastly, I want to show you how to download the image as a NumPy array. Sometimes you want to extract some pixels and to directly pass those pixel values into other Python packages. For example, uh, scikit-learn or scikit -image, images. You want to do some machine learning or others. You don't have to download the data as a TIFF. You can certainly download as a TIFF and then open the TIFF, the geo -TIF, and then uh, create NumPy array. But you can also directly retrieve the data as a NumPy array from Earth Engine images. So similarly, right, these are the import packages. And this is the image. And I only here choose four bands in here. And then you can create an um, ROI or, or AOI. Then from here, you call the function called ee dot numpy and all you need to do is just pass in the image and the ROI. So you can also select the bands in here. You can also select uh, what property you want to pass into uh, because when it's being returned, it's a dictionary. So I'm going to use the default settings in here and you can execute. Then it's going to show you, for example, what the image. Don't, don't try to extract a large area because it's going to take a long time and uh, Google Earth Engine does not allow you to extract a large area. So this one is only a small one, uh, 373 rows and columns. And this is how many channels, how many bands, right? So this is a small image. Then you can convert this one and then you can rescale if you want and then to show the images. So this example is adapted from um, uh, here, this link and I create this to Justin uh, Breton. So all you need to do, uh, just hit run. Then you should be able to see the image, okay? So in here, you don't see I download the image as a GeoTIFF. So this is directly from Earth Engine image and then to a NumPy. And then you can use the NumPy to do whatever you need to do. Okay, so that's all for this video. If you enjoy this video, please uh, consider hitting the like button and subscribe to our channel. And otherwise, I will see you in my next video. Take care. Bye-bye.